Good morning and welcome to Welcome Baptist Church online Easter Day. This is the day when we celebrate the life of Jesus Christ. We remember that though he died for our sins, he is risen. We have an all-age talk from Joanne. We have worship led by Dan and a team of musicians this morning. Lottie is going to sing a beautiful solo for us. And I'm going to preach on the resurrection of Jesus. But let's start by remembering some famous words that have been spoken since the church first began 2,000 years ago. They would shout with joy, Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Come, Lord Jesus, come.
Nothing can stand against What a powerful name it is The name of Jesus What a powerful name it is The name of Jesus And Lord, we remember this on Easter Sunday. Of all days, we recognise what a powerful, what a wonderful, what a beautiful name it is. That you would die on a cross for, for us. We are not worthy, Lord. We are not worthy. But through your love and your grace, we are saved. And Lord, we recognise that this morning. As we sing, what a beautiful name, what a wonderful name, and what a powerful name it is, is Jesus Christ. Amen. And how great the chasm that lay between us, how high the mountain I could not. In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. And then through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows.
and hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free, hallelujah. Has lost its grip on me, you have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ. I We've just sung a song that speaks straight into, into the Easter story. And Lord, it's called Living Hope. You are our living hope and we thank you for that. We thank you for meeting us here this morning on this wonderful day, on this day of celebration. Amen. Amen. We're now going to hand over to Joanne, who's going to bring us an all-age talk. Joanne. Easter is one of those times where we like to give and receive gifts, probably something like this. Now, they're very pretty on the outside, but like most gifts, the best bit is what's on the inside. Yum. Now, God has given us a gift at Easter too, but God's gift is a little bit different. After Jesus was crucified, his body was laid in a nearby tomb. On the morning of the third day, two women who were friends of Jesus came to the tomb. Now they were the first people to understand how God's gift was different. Because you see, the best bit is not on the inside because the tomb was empty.
Lord, we come together on Easter Sunday to praise you for your amazing power, for your amazing victory. That power which raised Jesus from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly realms is the same power that you pour out on us by your Holy Spirit. So Lord, as we come before you today, we ask that you would fill us with your Holy Spirit, that we may know that same power and strength. Help us, Lord, to fix our eyes on the things that are above. Help us to have a quiet assurance that despite what we see around us, in the heavenly realms, Lord, you have not forgotten us, you have not abandoned us, and you are faithfully and lovingly working in ways that we can't see. We pray for our world, that people would turn to you in their trouble and tribulation, that people would turn to you in their confusion, and that people would turn to you in their fear, and find you and be found by you, Lord, turn hearts and minds towards you. Lord, would you meet people's needs. Lord, we pray for our Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, and we ask that you would meet him in his time of need. In his humbled circumstances, Lord, would you cause his eyes to turn towards you. Would he find in you salvation, strength, wisdom, and all that he needs. Lord, we pray for the many people across this nation who are bereaved and suffering loss. Lord, would you meet them in their grief? Lord, would you extend your comforting hand toward them? Lord, as we celebrate Easter and your conquering of death, please give us hope even as we grieve. Let's proclaim together that hope in Jesus as we pray in the way that he taught us. We pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. This reading is Matthew 28 verses 1 to 10. Jesus has risen. After the Sabbath at dawn, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and, going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were as white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, he has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay, then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has risen from the dead and he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Thank you, Laura. Father, I thank you that your son, Jesus Christ, is risen from the dead, just as he said. 
I thank you that the word this morning, the word this year, the word in eternity is that Jesus Christ is not dead. He is alive. Father, as we examine these words, as we spend time meditating on them and thinking about them, I ask that you would speak to us. Father God, would you open the eyes of our hearts? Would you unstop our ears that we may ourselves hear the good news of Jesus? In his precious name. Amen. I have a confession, an Easter confession to make. It's not that I've eaten all the Easter eggs, though that could be the case. But my Easter confession is that I love country music. I picked up the bug, not coronavirus, obviously, but a love of country music when Joe and I lived in Dallas. We lived with the most beautiful and wonderful Christian lady. She was faithful and gentle. She taught Joe and I so much. She gave us so much wisdom in the time that we lived with her. There was a day when I was feeling, I think, a little bit down. I, I was feeling like giving up. Uh, the church was huge, uh, and I was well and truly out of my depth. Um, but this lady took me into her kitchen with Joe and put on a song. It was a country song. It was the first country song I ever loved. It won't be the last. I'd like to read you the words. It was by a fella called Randy Travis. And it goes like this. Daddy should have been a preacher man because everybody loved to hear him speak. He didn't always follow his own advice, but we got a sermon every week. He'd say, trouble always starts as fun and broken hearts will always mend. Tough times don't last, tough people do. And nothing breaks if it can bend. Then the chorus. Don't ever sell your saddle. Never owe another man. Watch where you spit on a windy day. Don't use words you can't understand. Find the Lord before you need him. And never lose your pride. Don't ever sell your saddle. Because life's a long, long ride. Don't ever sell your saddle. Life's a long, long ride. Basically here, the songwriter is telling us, don't give up. Don't give in. And there are times, and maybe right now is one of them for you, where we feel like giving up. We feel like giving in. But don't give up. John Ortberg tells an incredible story about two men who were in an art museum. And they came upon a painting of a chess game. One character looked like a man. The other looked a bit like the devil. The man is down to his last few pieces. The man that looks like the devil has amassed a number of his opponent's pieces. One of the two men looking at this painting was, it so happened, an international chess player. And something about the painting intrigued him. He began to study it. He became so engrossed that the man with him grew impatient and asked him what he was doing. And he said to his friend, there's something about this painting that bothers me and I want to study it for a little while. 
You go ahead and wander around. He studied it. His head started nodding. His hands started moving. When his friends came back, he said, we have to locate the man that painted this picture. He either needs to change the picture or change the title. Why? His friend asked. What's wrong with the painting? Well, it's entitled Checkmate. But the title is wrong because the king has got one more move. The king has got one more move. Don't give up. Don't sell your saddle because the king has got one more move. Let's look at this Bible passage again. It's Matthew chapter 28 and verse 1 starts with this deeply moving image of two women going to the tomb. After the Sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. I love this. There is a courageous faithfulness about these two Marys. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph and James. And there they go, heartbroken to the tomb. I find it interesting because where are the men? Well, we know where the men are. They're holed up. They are fearful. They are afraid that Judas has betrayed all of them too. We saw Peter deny Jesus those three times. And all the disciples are are staying safe behind locked doors. But these tremendous women of faith, disciples of Jesus, Mary and Mary, are going to the tomb. They're heartbroken because they do not know the king has got one more move. Look at verse 2. There was a violent earthquake. There had been an earthquake when Jesus died. And now as Jesus is raised to life, there is another earthquake. These seismic movements happen because Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, is doing something amazing. In the first instance, he's taking all the sin of all the world, all the grief, all the pain upon himself. In the second instance, he's bursting forth. Death could not hold him. The grave could not keep him. And he walks free. There is an incredible violent earthquake. For the angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. I love that image of the angel on the stone. I see him in my mind's eye with his legs crossed a triumphant smile on his face, which we can't see because his face is like lightning. And he's dressed in these white robes of purity that look like striven snow. But he's smiling triumphantly because the grave is empty. Now the angel rolled the stone away Not to release Jesus from the tomb. Jesus wasn't stopped by any stone. But the angel had moved the stone to demonstrate to the entire world that the tomb is empty. And it is empty today. There is no tomb of Jesus It is empty. We have a description of him 
His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. Verse 4 tells us that there had been guards outside the tomb. Let's look at them. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. They'd fainted in fear, seeing this glorious, amazing angel with a face like lightning, clothes white as snow. They've dropped down like dead men. They weren't dead. They were afraid. But the women are there. This is what the angel says to them. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid. In contrast to the rough, tough guards, the women stand straight. And the angel says, don't be afraid. You may feel afraid this morning, but no one who's seeking for Jesus, no one who's looking for Jesus ever needs to be afraid. Fear is a powerful thing. Max Licardo writes this. We fear being sued, finishing last, going broke. We fear the mole on the back, the new kid on the block, the sound of the clock as it ticks us closer to the grave. We sophisticate investment plans, create elaborate security systems and stronger military. Yet, he says, we depend on mood-altering drugs more than any generation in history. Moreover, and he quotes, the average child today has the same level of anxiety as the average psychiatric patient in the 1950s. It's heartbreaking. He goes on. Fear, it seems, has taken a hundred-year lease on the building next door and set up shop, oversized and rude, unwilling to share the heart with happiness. Happiness complies. Do you ever see the two together? Can one be happy and afraid? At the same time, clear thinking and afraid, confident and afraid, merciful and afraid. No, fear is a big bully. It's the bully in the high school hallway, brash, loud and unproductive. For all the noise fear makes and the room fear takes, fear does little good. Fear never wrote a symphony or a poem. It never negotiated a peace treaty or cured a disease. Fear never pulled a family out of poverty or a country out of bigotry. Fear never saved a marriage or a business. Courage did that. Faith did that. People who refused to consult or cower to their timidness did that. But fear itself, fear herds us into a prison of unlocked doors. Wouldn't it be great to walk out? Wouldn't it be great for the angel to roll away the stone of fear in your life and for you to walk out? Wouldn't it be great for almighty God, the creator of heaven and earth, to roll away that stone of fear and set you free? I believe he can. Because the king has got one more move. Don't be afraid, the angel says to the courageously bold women. Don't be afraid. For I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He is risen.
risen, just as he said. Come, he says, come and see the place where he lay. What an image. As this angel, face like lightning, clothes like snow, stoops into the empty grave as two fearful women follow him in. His lightning face lights up the room and they see the grave is empty. He has risen just as he said. The angel tells them, then go quickly, verse 7, and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. That's an incredible verse. The angel says to them, inside this empty tomb, go and you will see him. Go and you will find him. He's not playing hide and seek. He will reveal himself to you. And Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. And he will reveal himself to you just as he revealed himself to these two women, Mary and Mary. So they go, verse 8. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. I love this. The women do exactly what they are told by the angel. There is an obedience here that is going to get the most incredible reward. God always rewards obedience. To obey is better than sacrifice, the Bible tells us. And look at verse 9. Suddenly, Jesus met them. Whoa. Greetings, he said. Kai Aero. Kai Aero. That's an incredible word which has been translated greetings to us. It means to rejoice, to be glad, to rejoice exceedingly, to be well, to thrive, to hail to greet enthusiastically. Kai Aero, Jesus says. It's not meek. It's not a whisper. It is a bold, in-your-face meeting of the Saviour. Suddenly, Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet and worshipped him. They got down on their knees and held his feet and they worshipped him. Don't tell me that the Bible says Jesus isn't God. Don't tell me that Jesus never said he is God. He did and he is, and the Bible proclaims it. These women are on their knees and they are worshipping Jesus. It's an incredible image of our King coming down and meeting with his precious children. And again, I tell you, he longs to meet with you too. Then Jesus said to them, verse 10, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. The king has got one more move. Go and tell my brothers 
to go to Galilee. And here's that promise again. There they will see me. That's the promise of Easter. On Saturday, the Pharisees thought it was checkmate. The Sadducees thought it was game, set and match. Herod thought he was the king. But the real king, the true king, has one more move. The truth is the same. And the truth is right now that if we will come to him, no matter our fear, no matter our trembling, no matter our courage levels, if we come to him now and confess our sins, he will wash us clean. He will make us new. Not only will he give us new life bursting forth from within us, but we will meet him. That's the promise. These are uncertain days. Our country is in lockdown. We are separated from people we love. There is fear and uncertainty. Our businesses, our livelihoods are at risk. But Jesus says to you this morning, the king has one more move. Can you hear his whisper? The king has one more move move. Can you hear it? The king has one more move. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for Jesus. He took the sins of the world. He died the death of the world and he is not dead. He is risen. Like Mary and Mary, we long to meet you. We confess our sins to you. And we ask for your forgiveness. Lord Jesus, we open our hearts to you and welcome you in this Easter day. May we hear your greeting. May we know your love. Would you displace our fear with joy? In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Andy. Let's, uh, let's begin to end our service now by singing, I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the
So Lord, as we end our service, this Easter service, this day of celebration, this day of triumph over the enemy, Lord, we ask that you keep close to us this week and that this day doesn't just stand for something on today, this day, it stands for every day. It's what our faith is based on. It's based on you living. Help us remember that in these coming days and weeks, Lord. Amen. Amen. It's been so wonderful to spend Easter Sunday with you all. Uh, we're looking forward to next Sunday where we have another online service for you all. We hope you have a great week, that you keep well and you keep safe. And again, it's been so wonderful. Thank you so much for, for tuning in, however you're, you're meeting us this morning. Uh, it's, been, it's been truly amazing. So thank you very much. Before you go, I just want to read something from Numbers chapter 6 uh, as a blessing uh, over everyone listening. Uh, the Lord says this to Moses, but it applies to us. It applies to us. And this is our prayer for, for, for today and, and forevermore, really. It says, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his faith shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. I pray that over each and every one of us this morning, that those words would, would stick true to us. So as you go, keep safe, keep well. See you next Sunday.